The first rule of Bitcoin is that you do not talk about your Bitcoins. The second rule of Bitcoin is that you always talk about Bitcoin. Yes. Welcome, Amish. What's Very the first welcome. rule of Bitcoin Fight Club? Uh, I mean, the first rule of Bitcoin Fight Club is that we we do talk about it a lot. And there's a rule in the in the movie that's like, you know, if it's your first time, then you have to fight. That's not really one of our rules, but we do encourage folks to sign up and to participate in the actual fighting instead of just coming as a spectator. Uh, that was kind of the one of the things I wanted to push with this was that, you know, a lot of people go online and they talk a lot of shit <laughs> and uh, they're usually not really willing to back that up in person. So that's 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 would be my my first rule, I guess, would be like, hey, if, if you're going to challenge someone to a fight, you better be prepared to actually do it. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's. That's kind of the first rule in my mind is, you know, no, uh, no backing out of a fight. If, if you agree to do it, you better show up. Yeah, that makes sense. Perfectly take responsibility for what you're intending to do or what to say. Let's get to the rules in a second, but uh, could you tell me how did this all came about? Sure. So it was BitBlock Boom in 2022, where we had our first event. Um, and basically, you know, I, I'm in a, a crew, a meme group, if you will, on, on Bitcoin Twitter called Triple Elite Memes. And we're just a bunch of uh, Bitcoiners who hang out in Twitter spaces, basically. And we became friends that way. And we were online, you know, doing what we do, trolling people. We were actually trolling uh, Clancy, who's... Uh, she's the wife of Joe Rogers, um, and there were some guys who were, like, friends with them. They didn't like that we were trolling her, uh, Bitcoin fuckboy, and a fella named Ephesians, who now goes by Buffalo on on Twitter, um, were basically, they called me and a guy named Wooderson out, uh, you know, in the in the comments, and were like, hey, I'll fight you. And we were like, well, let's do it then, right? Let's, we're all going to go to BitBlock Boom. We'll rent out a gym, an MMA gym, and we'll sign waivers, right? Basically releasing liability, saying like, hey, we're not going to sue anyone if we get hurt. And we're not going to do this in the streets like savages. We're going to put on gloves. We'll wear a mouthpiece and a cup. We'll have rules. You know, the UFC has standard kind of rules for the you know, the competition of MMA so that people, you know, things like you don't kick someone in the head while they're down on the ground kind of thing, right? So it's not complete savagery, right? And uh, so we all got together. We we booked the gym. Uh, we showed up. We probably had about 20 or 30 people kind of show up to that event. Um, there was two fights, me and Ephesians and uh, Bitcoin Fuckboy and Wooderson and yeah, we went at it. We had three three minute rounds each, and um, you know we trained a lot. That that was kind of the thing for me was like, you know, taking this as an opportunity to learn jujitsu, um, to learn the sport of mixed martial arts, um, because it is it is a you know it's a sport. It's not it's not just two guys going in there with with their egos and their anger their pent up aggression and going at it. If, if you try to approach it with that uh, mindset, you're going to lose. I can almost guarantee you. Right. So I took it super seriously that first time around. Um, I had never stepped foot in a jujitsu environment before. And I knew as soon as uh, Ephesians agreed to fight me that I didn't want to lose, but most of all, like I didn't want to get embarrassed. Right. And so, Doing that, going through that journey now, jujitsu is something that I do all the time, right? And ever since then, I've, I've been kind of loyal to the gym that I signed up at. And so, so yeah, so we, we all met at Bitblock Boom. We rented out a gym. The venue was great. You know, they had like a whole sound system so we could do, you know, announcers and they had 
a, a nice ring set up and you know we got a bunch of our friends to show up and cheer us on and Ephesians and Fuckboy got a bunch of their friends to show up and cheer them on and you know we had we had two really good fights it was super fun I think everyone that was there really enjoyed kind of seeing their their friends from online get in the ring and and duke it out and then you know afterwards we all party together right so fuckboy and ephesians became really good friends of of wooderson and i uh it took a lot of you know courage and we we really had a new respect for each other after you know meeting each other in the ring you know in the months leading up we were talking shit we were like you know going at it online like a lot of people do but then you know, you meet someone face to face, there's always kind of a different kind, you know, a different level of respect that you show um, versus online through the kind of window of your screen where you're safe in your house and, <laughs> you know, your what you say usually doesn't have repercussions. And then you meet someone and it's different. And then you fight someone and it's really different, right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, that that event was the first one. And then we recently did another event at the Bitcoin conference in Nashville, where it was it was just me and Needs Creations this time. Uh, at Need Creations was his handle. Uh, we agreed to do a boxing match this time, and kind of a similar thing. He's <laughs> he he's been on this this fitness journey, and I think you know it really helped him kind of dial in like what he needs to do for that. And, you know, myself having another fight on the horizon really challenged me to, to get back in the gym and focus on boxing, which is a totally different thing than jujitsu and, and mixed martial arts. You know, there's no kicking, there's no grappling, there's no takedown, no submissions. It's just punches, basically. Right. And uh, I learned a lot about boxing this time around. Yeah. So, you know, we had the event in Nashville. We, this time we, we had a food truck. I think we had probably twice as many people as we did at BitBlock Boom show up to spectate. And then after the boxing match, we we hosted an open mat, uh, no gi, jujitsu, um, so that anyone who showed up could just kind of get on the mats and learn. If they they were inexperienced and had never done jujitsu before, we had some high level guys who were willing to kind of show them some things. Uh, and we had some people who were actually pretty good. I know there was a, a dude from Ocean Mining that showed up and went uh, toe-to-toe with Wooderson and, and Muay Thai and uh, Jiu-Jitsu. And it was kind of fun to see, like, hey, this guy is just some rando who showed up at our event, and he's he's throwing down. So it was, it was super fun. And, again, we all went out kind of after the event. And, you know, it's, it's really a good kind of bonding experience. If you've ever done any kind of martial arts, I think, you know, it's a really good way for like dudes to get to know each other, <laughs> you know, um, aside from like talking on Twitter spaces all day and things like that. It's really a different kind of connection, not only when you meet someone in real life, but, you know, when you fight them, you really get to know somebody. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of how it. It started, you know, back at the Block Boom and kind of where it's come to now. We're already trying to plan for Vegas next year. I think we we want to do kind of a bigger event. We've got um, a guy in our group who has some connections with pro fighters. You know, we're hoping to get a pro fighter or a, a high-level uh, black belt in jiu-jitsu there to do a bit of like an MMA training camp so that folks can come out and, and kind of learn – basic moves and, you know, just have it be something for the community that, you know, I think like fighting comes with like a self-sovereignty kind of mindset, right? Um, You know, working out, eating right, all those things that, you know, I think a lot of people in Bitcoin sort of start to realize has an important function in your sovereignty. For me, like learning how to fight has been that as well, right? It's like, if you can run a marathon and you can lift, you know, you can deadlift 400 pounds, those, that's great. But if, 
if you're in a physical confrontation with someone else, do you know how to handle yourself? Right. It's another level of the fitness world that I think more and more people are, are starting to come around to. You, you, you know, we also had this idea to Sabi to organize fights between Bitcoiners, but uh, as a wise man once said, ideas were shit. So you're doing it. As I understand it, so you did an MME and then you did a boxing and yep. you, you might do jiu-jitsu. So, so it's, you're trying to bring together Bitcoiners and they can choose the way the, the rules that they are fighting, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, because if, if you watch, you know, the UFC, you know, the uh, mixed mixed martial arts combines a lot of those different fighting styles. So, um, you know, when you're watching a UFC match, you'll see them start out boxing or kickboxing. Um, and then a lot of times, you know, when the fight goes to the ground, They're, they're using judo uh, or jujitsu to bring the fight to the ground and then submission grappling, right? So when someone taps out from an arm bar or a choke, um, that's usually jujitsu that's being used, right? So when I did the fight with Need Creations, he knew that I had been training jujitsu um, for the MMA match. And he, he wanted to have some kind of level playing field, right? Um, And he, he thought boxing would be a more level playing field. Is not that he had any experience boxing, but he knew I, I didn't. And uh, there's a lot of crossover, obviously, right? So, like, rolling jujitsu, a lot of times we're doing, you know, the, the rounds, three three-minute rounds, or, you know, you're getting that high-intensity interval kind of workout style. So your cardio might be developed for something like boxing. But... Yeah, it's a different skill set, right? And so throwing punches um, and, and learning how to dodge punches in jujitsu, you're not, there's no striking. So you're kind of like taking on a whole other layer of the fight, which if you see a fighter like Sean Strickland in the UFC, he's a really good boxer, right? Um, and he's, he's a really good all around mixed martial artist. You know, I wouldn't want to get taken down or, or you know, choked by Sean Strickland either. But, you know, there's there's really the way I looked at it in training for the boxing match was there's no way this is going to hurt my all around, you know, uh, combat sports effectiveness. If I go in and I, I spent probably two or three weeks leading up or two or three months leading up to the fight with need creations, focusing primarily on boxing. You know, I, I went to a local fight gym I went to as many boxing classes as I could. I tried to get into their sparring rounds, which which was really helpful in preparing, um, like actually, you know, sparring with someone. And, yeah, I mean, I think that's going to have good benefits for if I do an MMA fight next time, you know, up my stand-up game will be better than if I didn't focus on those kinds of things. And, you know, a lot of... UFC guys will train Muay Thai, you know, kickboxing, a lot of leg kicks. That was something in my fight with Ephesians where he threw a lot of leg kicks. And knowing how to check a leg kick, you know, mostly like the defense is, is something that I think people should should learn. Like you could be out in the street and someone could start a confrontation with you and they could start trying to kick you, right? And Um, so like just for self-defense is, is another big reason why I love jujitsu. It's, it's training you for a lot of these different scenarios. Um, it really depends on the school that you, you train at the, I, I go to a, a hoist Gracie jujitsu academy is where I train jujitsu and, and they do train striking to some level, but a lot of jujitsu gyms will just be training for tournaments so they never encounter this kind of scenario so um yeah i don't know i mean i kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent but but there's there's so much that you can kind of talk about when it comes to the different styles of fighting and, and we, you know for to make it kind of inclusive for bitcoiners that are coming we don't know everyone's you know training background or whatever it is 
we want them to be able to show up and put on a show, even if you've had no fight experience. Like if you and someone else on the internet decide that you want to fight and neither one of you have trained, then, you know, we had talked about even getting like big inflatable boxing gloves just so no one gets hurt. And it's like one of those fun things that you can do just to put on a show, right? I mean, we really don't want like anyone needing to go to the hospital or get hurt kind of thing with, with these events, right? We want this to be a fun event that you can even bring your family to if you want. And there's a risk that comes with people with no training um, where they're actually more likely to hurt someone than someone who has a lot of training, right? If you're a pro boxer and you get in the ring with someone with no boxing experience, you're not just going to tee off and throw haymakers at their head. You know, you're going to have a controlled spar where you're just, it's, it's, it's almost like a, a boxing lesson that you're going to give them, right? Uh, and you might, you know, give them a bloody nose or a black eye or that sort of thing, but you're less likely to give someone a concussion if you're like a trained fighter, just like in jujitsu, um, you know, you're, you're not going to break someone's arm with an arm bar if you're a black belt, but a white belt, you know, they might get in there and not have the, the self-control in a, in a environment like that to, to not hurt someone. So that's where, you know, we, we try to let people choose their own adventure so that, you know, it's like, Hey, I'm not going to put, someone who who's never been in an MMA class in the ring with someone else who's never been in an MMA class and let them go at it because the chances of injury are actually way higher. I want to touch on many of those things, but uh, let me ask a question. For now, you are only only planning to organize events in the United States. It's correct? For me personally, like it's just, you know, I've got two small children ages one and three international travel for Bitcoin events is, is just something that I can't really do, but you know, this isn't something that you need our permission for. If you want to do a similar event, you know, we, we advertised really heavily, um, like not officially, but we talked about our Austin event from BitBlock Boom a lot online. We notified Bitcoin magazine that we were doing this months and months ago. Um, and they put on a similar thing. Uh, they had a karate combat event that just so happened to be the same night as our event. Um, like we're, we're a sideshow, right? We're not even any, we're not related to Bitcoin magazine or BitBlock Boom. We're just, you know, anyone can do this is what I want to make clear. So like, you know, if you call it Bitcoin Fight Club, we might give you a hard time about it, but you can host fights, you know, it, it's surprisingly simple to do this kind of event. You just need to find a local martial arts studio or gym uh, near the event, you know, near the conference or whatever it is, uh, the meetup. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you can rent out these, these venues. Um, that's what we did, right? So, you know, we're not planning on doing an international one, but we would be stoked to see more of this kind of thing happen um, at other Bitcoin events. You know, seeing Bitcoin Magazine contact the Karate Combat people and, and then doing that, like, yeah, we're kind of, we're kind of butthurt that they chose the same night as our event because I think it took a lot of people away from our event. But overall, I think it's great to see you know, Bitcoiners leaning into combat sports and, and doing this kind of event. So I would love to see international fighters do this kind of thing. I think Bitcoiners, like this, like I mentioned earlier, like the self-sovereignty aspect of it is appealing to Bitcoiners, right? You want to take control of your, your physical health. You want to know how to, how to, protect your big, I mean, it may come down to protecting your Bitcoin, right? You're out on the street and someone's trying to rob you <laughs> and you can use this kind of stuff, right? So uh, it's a self-sovereignty thing. I would, you know, we're not planning a international Bitcoin fight club event anytime in the near future, but 
if we could grow it to where we were actually making money <laughs> on this kind of thing, like we, this is all, you know, a, a loss for us financially, right? Like we, we booked the venue, we, we got insurance, uh, we printed t-shirts, right? So at the end of the day, we ended up spending, oh, about a thousand dollars, um, that we don't really expect to get back. But if we could grow it to where we were actually selling tickets and it was profitable and we had the money to travel internationally and do it, I think we would all love that. Right. But, you know, right now it's not in the, in the foreseeable future. I mentioned to you that we wanted to do this at Wasabi Wallet, but based on your answer, I am guessing that you are not familiar with what happened to Wasabi Wallet recently. Uh, yeah, no, the, there was... Wasn't there some uh, legal things that happened? Yes, yeah, something like that. Something like that. Uh, it's actually Samurai Wallet that the main guys from Samurai Wallet, they got into jail, right? Right. At Wasabi Wallet, um, I, I left like half a year ago because of legal problems, but right. uh, not as serious as the Samurai guys. Uh, but around two weeks ago, two months ago, the rest of the people who remained at Wasabi Wallet has also shut down, right? Yeah. So what my point would be here is that we are not in a position to organize these events anymore because the money is not coming in anymore, right? Yeah. Anyhow, when I, when I left Wasabi, I started a new, a new adventure. I started to interview rejuvenation olympics athlete, athletes people who are trying to slow down their aging and why doing that i realized that i don't want to go this far away from bitcoin as i i got so i decided to also do something that's somehow in the intersection of bitcoin and health and i asked you that um, your Bitcoin fight clubs are in the US or not. The reason is because, well, due to the Wasabi wallet stuff, uh, my lawyers advised to never set foot in US soil again. But what I, I, I really, I really wanted to actually participate in Bitcoin fight club. And if you guys come internationally, then please hit me up because I yeah. have a, I have quite a history. Um, you don't know now because ever since I'm in Bitcoin, I stopped all this. But before Bitcoin, I had like 15 years of of, of, of different kinds of experience. Uh, so Kyokushin Karate was the, the largest thing. Uh, in Kyokushin Karate, the thing is that there are no gloves. So you're hitting with, uh, with bare fists. Therefore, right. you cannot hit into the face. Uh, but anyway, but that's, that's, that's a much... That's an interesting thing. I, I, I like it that way. Uh, and, and you can kick much better because the big gloves are not blocking your kicks. So I, I became a quick kicker and, and I, I didn't really go down into the, the ground. You also mentioned uh, the sport aspect versus self-defense, right? I've also done some Krav Maga. Uh, that's an Israel self-defense stuff. Yeah. And I've only done it for half a year, a year, maybe. Yeah. And I've learned, I've learned the most important lesson from there in terms of street self-defense. You go for the groin, you try to kick or hit or grab the balls, and then you run away. <laughs> That's but, all the street fights that you do. Go for, for sure. the balls, run I mean, away. There's, there's definitely that <laughs> level of, you know, in the streets, there's there's not really any of these like gentlemanly rules anymore. It's all out the window, and you need to do whatever you can do <laughs> to defend yourself in those scenarios. And and Krav Maga also, I mean, I think they they really focus on the multiple attackers, right? So if you if you have like three or four people trying to steal your wallet or abduct you right it's like how do i fight three or four people and, and I, mm -hmm. I like that about or guns 
Yeah. 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 And, and so that's, that's where like the, I mentioned the jujitsu academy that I go to. They, you know, they don't focus on tournament jujitsu. They really focus on self defense in a lot of these. I, we do a lot of gun and knife drills um, and multiple attacker drills. So, like, when I got a stripe on my belt recently, it was like two different people came at me and had, they were trying to choke me out. And I just had to survive for two or three minutes um, while two people were trying to choke me out. And that was part of my, my test, right? And yeah, so that, you know, it, it really varies from, from gym to gym. But I think the mindset, someone who, who just goes to a boxing class and learns how to throw a punch and learns how to dodge a punch and, and that you start to develop a mental awareness in any combat sport of kind of what's going on around you. You're starting to size people up and you're going to have an advantage over anyone who doesn't train at all, right? If, you know, it's the average person in a bar fight or, you know, someone trying to rob you, they don't really train for that, right? They're just kind of desperate uh, for whatever reason and they're coming at you pretty much unprepared uh, for the situation. If, if you're going to any kind of combat sport couple times a week and developing the skills to engage in a conflict right and i think the mental aspect of it is is almost if not more important than oh i'm, I'm you know I'm, someone's got a gun how do i disarm them you know uh and, and knowing that the technical movements to do to not get shot or stabbed or that kind of thing. It's important, definitely, you know, and some of the folks that go to the gym that I go to are like EMTs or police officers. And so I know for a fact, like one of the EMTs that I train with, you know, he, he chooses that gym specifically because they do knife drills, because they do gun drills. And he's in situations, there's a lot of elderly people uh, in my area and it's like he, he could get called to an EMT call where it's an old person with dementia who's got a knife, right? And he doesn't want to break their arm taking the knife away, right? And so he's he's learning this skill to, like, do his job better, be a better uh, citizen, you know, be a better person. And whereas, you know, someone else who's in that situation, it's like, oh, you know, 80 year old dementia patient with a knife comes at me, I'm just going to kick them in the face and knock them unconscious <laughs> and take the knife away. And it's like where he's got a skill now where he, he can gently remove the knife and put them into some sort of submission hold where he's not killing them, right? And he's, he's able to do his job better, right? And so there's all kinds of scenarios that you can train for, but just having the mental awareness, sizing people up when you go into a room, kind of, you can see it almost in someone's eyes if they're, <laughs> if they train kind of thing, right? You sort of start to get the lay of the land um, a little, a little better. You have more confidence, right? It's, you, you, you know, going to the gym and lifting weights and getting huge uh, is great, <laughs> but if you can't use that in a given scenario, except to hurt someone, Right. Not every situation you might be in requires you to actually hurt someone. Right. A lot of times you can de-escalate and, you know, talk someone down well before it, it gets to physical confrontation. Or if it does get to physical confrontation, you can demonstrate to them that you're superior and they're just going to get hurt and they'll, they'll back off. So. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely love the idea of getting Bitcoiners into combat sports. I, you know, it's, I'm really passionate about it. I think, you know, it's, it's something that we sort of lost in like the fiat world where like, you know, it's a whole like strong men make good times, weak men make bad times kind of thing. And there's this idea that like, 
you can go to a CrossFit class and, and now you're like a strong man or something. And it's like, well, you know, you're not going to be able to use any of those muscles or skills if you don't train for a specific thing. You know, I've, I've always been a runner. I ran track in high school. I ran cross country in high school. You know, I was in the military and we did a lot of running and it's always one of those things where like, are you, if you're just some guy who runs, that's a great skill to have. <laughs> uh, if, if you're just a solo guy in the world, you can avoid a lot of conflicts by just running away. <laughs> and that's great. Um, but then I had kids and I've got a wife and it's like, I can't just run away if I'm out in the street somewhere with my family and something pops off, right? I've, I've got to be able to defend the little ones. And it's like, my wife's a great runner too. She, she can only carry one of them at a time. <laughs> uh, so it, it, it has given me a whole other level of, of confidence getting into the, the combat sports that I think most Bitcoiners would appreciate. Um, you know, you want to be sovereign and, and hold your, your keys. It's another thing where like no one, no one can take the training away from you, right? It's like, I've got my Bitcoin. I've got it stored somewhere safe in a way no one can take. Well, you know, if you have a fit body and you know how to use it, that's another level of sovereignty that like, you know, someone can't take that from you. You know, growing up at Eastern Europe, right? In, or Middle Europe, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I've had my fair share of street fights and two of them involved even knives, you know. But in the last, last 10 years, I have not been in a single street fight, right? So is this the world that's changing or, or did it because I went to other places and in other places people are not fighting or what do you think? Are we, are we, are we going into good times and that's why people are not fighting anymore on the street? Well, I would hope so. I mean, I think street, you know, going back to like the very first question you asked, like, you know, how did this all come about? We talked about like, hey, we're all going to BitBlock Boom. Uh, Bitcoin fuckboy and Ephesians are going to be there. We've been getting pretty heated with our kind of rhetoric and the way we've been talking online. We don't want this to turn into a bar fight or a street fight if we see them in Austin. Like, let's let's just ask this out, civilized. Let's have a, a, a a signed waiver so we don't no one gets sued um and yeah i mean i think there's avenues for more civilized ways of doing this i don't know i mean i where i look around i see a lot more crime than i did when i was a kid in the u.s that could just be you know the propaganda and things that we're seeing you know it's hard for me to really say like i have had a confrontation with a homeless guy a few years ago where I was riding my bike on the sidewalk, which was legal where I was doing it. And he like shoved me off my bike. <laughs> um, and so like I got off my bike and we kind of got into a tussle. You know, I quickly realized that he, you know, he wasn't like, I just felt bad for him. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, this is, you know, this is not worth, you know, hurting someone. So I, I can't really say, I mean, maybe, you know, Europe is a little different. I, I think it's, it's good that street, you know, the street conflicts are kind of less frequent, but I don't know that that's, that's really a trend or not, or if that's going to continue to be the case. Um, I do think on average, most people avoid conflict and they don't want to get hurt or hurt someone else and that's a good thing i hate i hate seeing street fights you know you see a lot of stuff in in your twitter feed people getting seriously injured when they're in a conflict like that because there's concrete right if i if you do a takedown um like a judo takedown on the streets you could kill somebody easily so i you know i think it's it's good to take that kind of stuff to a mat where it's, it's you know a relatively safe environment 
with a referee, right, who's going to make sure that you're not, you know, hitting someone in the nuts, <laughs> right? Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I mean, overall trends, if that's going down or up, I, I think the trend that I see is, is a world that's getting a little more violent, but it's more violent in the ways of, like, armed robbery, uh, you know, gang fights, things like that, whereas the, the sort of machismo – uh agreed upon fighting in the street i mean there's just so much like legal liability that goes with something like that right if you you know most states in the u.s there's only two states where you can have mutual combat that's allowed and that's texas and washington and that's like if i you know we're on the street and you say hey you want to fight and i say yes we can just do that right um, that's illegal in almost every every state. And, you know, I think that along with, you know, I remember in, in school growing up, there was like this zero tolerance policy in, in the public schools for any kind of violence, meaning even if you didn't start the fight, somebody, you know, you're walking down the hall in school and somebody punches you in the face, if you punch them back, you're both going to be suspended uh, from school, even though you were just defending yourself. And I think that's really bad. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think we should be teaching kids to stand up for themselves and defend themselves uh, rather than like just run away or take a beating just so you don't get in trouble. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to to answer that because I think it's it's quite different in our two different geographies. I think the U U.S. and Eastern Europe is pretty different culturally right now. Okay, okay. So let's move away from the street into your dojo. So you mentioned revenue. Revenue, you're not making any money out of it. Um, you're planning to, how are you planning to, and most importantly, are you going to organize betting well, here's the uh, here's the thing with betting. Next year, the events in Vegas where where gambling is legal. Um, the problem is gambling may be legal, but we can't have declared winners or losers at our events because we're not sanctioned. So this is another thing where like the state and or you know, legal bodies have really kind of screwed up the sport of fighting. Although some people may think this is an improvement. Um, basically, when we host events, they're, they're what you would call a smoker or a sparring session. And we're not allowed to have declared winners or losers. Okay, because if we do that, then we have to get permission from, like in the case of boxing, there's a a sanctioned body called USA Boxing, where in order to fight under US, USA Boxing, you have to go get a physical, you have to pay them a certain amount. The way, you know, they're very conscious of the weight classes, right? So like when I fought Need Creations, he was coming in at about 300 pounds and I weighed about 180, 185. That would not be allowed in most sanctioned fights. Um, because of these these jurisdictional bodies, and, and the same thing applies to to martial mixed martial arts and a lot of the jujitsu type competitions. So, if we wanted to do gambling, then we would have to have like a declared winner or loser, and then it would be a whole other level of red tape. You know, we want to have the event to where anyone off the street can show up and participate in a fight if they want to, uh, even like last minute without letting us know. And I just don't see how we'll be able to, to gamble on stuff like that and have a declared winner or loser without breaking, you know, those kinds of rules. First of all, fuck the state. Secondly, it's interesting because I'm always talking about to the rejuvenation athletes about the how games transcend laws and ethics, but in this case, laws. And my main example is always like when you're doing some some 
some kickboxing match or some other kind of match, then the goal is to punch you in the face, right? And by law, you are not really allowed to punch anyone in the face. And yet games can transcend the other rules that we, we have in society. Um, but, but as I see even into games, um, the state is, is going to, to not try to, try to not, 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 not get back completely. Right. Well, they, and, want, they want their regulatory capture yeah. money yeah, is, is what it really comes down to. Like I said, with, with USA boxing, you know, you have to pay to register with them as a fighter. And then you have to pay to get your physical done and you have to pay for each kind of event that, so that it's sanctioned and it ends up being like a whole other level of expense for, for these fighters, which is really unfortunate. Like a lot of the guys that I train with, they don't have like a lot of money (laughs) to, to just like pay another fee to go do the sport that they love. And it ends up being cost prohibitive for a lot of the young fighters to even enter into competition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. um, When I was doing the karate stuff, that was, I was paying, huh? Maybe, maybe, 200 forints, which is like half a dollar, right? Like one occasion, like 200 forints, half a dollar. So, yeah. and that was even hard for me to pay. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's also interesting that you're saying that because I'm right now working on the rejuvenation Olympics, which is a completely new sport. And it didn't even occur to me that you know, when you want to get involved in something like fighting as a sport, then there is like a bureaucratic wall that prevents you from entering the space, right? The regulatory capture. But in the Rejuvenation Olympics, there is no bureaucratic wall. Like anyone can put out a website and the leaderboard right now, and no one's gonna try to tax me if I'm if I'm, I'm doing that. So, so that's, uh, that's, that's interesting. I didn't think like, you know, this is when you're starting a completely new sport out of nothing. One more thing, karate combat, Nick Carter. I, I, I see on Twitter that Nick Carter is training hard and I see a half naked guy who is shouting a lot on Twitter. Uh, I think he's called Gabriel, right? I, I really like like him, but uh, he also started training a lot. And I think these people are, are training to this karate combat thingy. And, and I'm also very interested in that because I was doing karate for a very long time. And I, I but I don't know what, what is that karate combat? Can, can you tell me? Yeah. So this is, this is kind of a conversation I got into with, some of the guys in, in Nashville is like, so what, what differentiates, you know, karate combat from the UFC? And I think, you know, if you, if you look at the way they set up the ring, um, in the UFC, you're in a cage, right? An octagon and, and it has like these vertical walls, uh, for, for a cage and karate combat, um, it's, it's really geared towards keeping the fight exciting for the spectators where they have this sort of angled wall at the side so that you can't get pinned up against the cage. Um, And I think the rule set is a little different from the UFC as well to sort of discourage the ground. Sorry, this is not Bitcoin related like Bitcoin Fight Club. Yeah, yeah. Karate Combat, so they, they, um, they're they're gaining popularity in the U.S. Um, as like an alternative to the UFC. And okay, the Point okay. Magazine uh, had a, a, an event with them. Um, like I said, like the same night we had our fight, <laughs> and and we actually volunteered to just combine the events and go to their event. And I would you know we would just put on a quick boxing exhibition, you know, in in the pre- preliminary early night for them, but. 
they ghosted us. Uh, the, the people at Bitcoin, we have a love-hate relationship with Bitcoin Magazine. They actually got us a bunch of free tickets to the actual conference. And, you know, there's people there that we really like and that like us. Um, and then there's other people there that, I guess, don't like my group of friends. Um, and so they, like, really ghosted us when it came to the, the combat thing. So, so when you're seeing karate combat, they have like a, you know, they're, they're complying with all the regulations. They're getting people, you know, into the, the sanctioned fighting kind of world. It's much more legit than what we're doing <laughs> as far as, you know, playing by the rules and, and that sort of thing. And they, they, um, yeah, so they have like their little influencers. I mean, our, our thing is really about like sort of the pleb kind of movement, right? We're not, we're not like famous people. <laughs> We like to say that we're more of niche internet micro celebrities rather than influencers <laughs> um, or anything like that. So the Friday Combat thing was more of a it, it's it's a much bigger event than than <laughs> um, and like they're not just going to let people show up and and fight you know randomly off the streets. You have to sign up way ahead of time. You have to get you know sanctioned by the regulatory bodies. Um, but the rule set is also different than than like UFC. And do I'm they sure go you, down the ground? That's what I was saying. I, I think I think they really discourage that. Okay, so if they don't, I I also have a question because when oh. I was doing all this kind of stuff, there was something called, huh, I don't even remember something K one, um, K one. So, yeah, some competition that was yeah. international and it's about martial arts or fighting sports. Those do not go down to the ground. So kicking and punching. I know. See, I so, love I love the going down on the ground stuff. Um, uh -huh. Jiu Jitsu, Judo, uh, wrestling, because I mean, it's like it's just one of those things where it opens up another layer of the game. Right. I mean, if you can only throw kicks and punches, it's fun. It's, it's a lot of fun for the crowd to watch that. I think the reason karate combat is becoming so popular mm -hmm. is because a lot of spectators, when they watch the UFC and they see them start to grapple on the ground, the spectators are like, boo, this is boring. We don't <laughs> enjoy this because they don't really know what's going on and how like the technical skills that are required when a fight goes to the ground to even escape a bad position, right? If someone has you in the mount position, which means that, you know, their legs are up above your legs, it's really difficult to get out of that. And then, especially in the UFC, they can just start swinging punches on you while they basically have you pinned on the ground. And the, the, the inverse of that is the guard position where they're on top of you, but they're below your, you have your legs wrapped around the person on top. And that's actually a dominant position for the person who's pinned underneath. And it seems like it wouldn't be, but when you have your legs in that equation, it really changes things up. And yeah, I mean, a lot of like the martial arts purists, the guys that I hang out with who are into jujitsu, like we, we love when the fight goes on the ground because we kind of know that that opens up a whole level of submission grappling that takes years <laughs> to understand or, or be able to compete in. Um, but I think for a lot of people, they're just like, oh, they're just hugging. But you don't understand what's happening, right? When, right. Even I don't understand it, right? Like when I see that people are doing stuff on the ground, I, I, I I don't understand it, even though I've done some ground stuff, but I've done it in, maybe I've done like 50 sessions. That's yeah. too much. 15 sessions throughout yeah. my entire life. So I, I, I've done stuff on the ground, but I still don't understand when people are down. Like what, what am I looking at? What's, well, who's who's in, winning? <laughs> in the context of something like a street fight, you know, they, they say a lot of street fights end up on the ground, right? Yes, if, if, yes. If someone's throwing punches if at you. you can't run away. <laughs> right. If someone's throwing punches at you and you can hug them, 
right? You're mm-hmm. basically stopping them from being able to punch you. If you can get their arms <laughs> locked up and you're holding them, and uh, if you can, and take you don't want to wanna punch, and you don't want to punch people, right? Because right. on the street, because like even on the street, you don't want to like you have to strategize. Like if you if you punch that guy and that guy gets all all bloody and shit, then you are in shit. Even though he's bloody, you are in shit, right? Yeah. But if you if you grab them and stuff, then you can you can control them much better. Right. So, well, and yeah, this is it, where like I I was saying, like it, it's it's you know you don't always not every scenario do you actually want to to injure someone or, mm-hmm. or hurt them, right? It's, like I mentioned, the old guy, the old homeless guy in the street that like shoved me off my bike, I. You know, I look back on that scenario and I'm like, man, if I had known jujitsu at the time, you know, I could have just taken him down and put him in like a simple submission hold and been like, hey, are you good? Are you good? Like, stop, stop trying to fight me. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, someone, like I said, with, with like dementia or, or, you know, someone out of the bar who's just drunk and acting stupid, they're going to be humbled really quickly. <laughs> If if you de-escalate it like that, rather than just getting into a bloody punching match, and yeah, like there's there's a lot of different scenarios where that is going to be much more effective than giving someone. Also, punching, I, you know, I've been in street fights too, and it's like if you punch someone and you don't have gloves yeah. on, your hand yeah. your hand is going to hit their teeth. And now your hand is all bloody and probably going to be infected because that guy's mouth is disgusting. Um, and it's it also hurts. like if you haven't punched anyone yet, then you're trying to punch your your hand is going to have a problem. Like uh, something something's going to happen with your hand. You break your wrist. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like when you when you go in a boxing match, you know you're taping your wrist, you're putting wraps on, you have these big cushiony gloves and it doesn't hurt when you punch the bag you you use that kind of protective gear for a reason because you can really hurt yourself throwing punches same with kicks i mean you know throwing a muay thai kick uh if you don't land it just right with your foot you know fully extended you could break your ankle very easily or your foot uh throwing kicks at someone something like jujitsu you're way less inclined to injure yourself or someone else. And I think that's great about fighting. Uh, You know, having sort of a gentle, soft fight is one of the best things about jujitsu is like, I go in there and I train with these guys and like no one, I mean, there's injuries, there's for sure, you know, injuries, but like that's, that's not the goal ever is to injure someone right it's like we're gonna have a role we're gonna you know get into each other it's intense we're trying to choke each other we're trying to put each other into a an arm bar or some sort of submission and it's really on the person it's on both of us to make sure that we don't get injured right like you need to tap early if you're in a position that hurts tap out uh if you're the person who's putting the hurt on someone else you know, don't, don't always wait for them to tap out, right? Sometimes, you know, I'll roll with guys who are really high level and I'm fighting so hard to not tap out and they're going gentle with me and they're like, okay, you should really tap out here. Like, you're not, you're not going to get out of this position. I have you in a choke. If you don't tap out, like you could pass out and that could be dangerous, right? It's like, okay. And, and I learned you know, going to jujitsu pretty early on, you know, rolling with guys who weigh a lot more than me. Sometimes I'm tapping out just because I have like a, a 250 pound guy on top of me in a position. He, he doesn't have me in a choke or a, any kind of submission position, but like, I just can't fucking breathe, dude, because you're huge and you're on top of me. And I need to tap out here. And I'm going to have like a fucking panic attack or something, you know, like, and and that's you kind of learn from rolling with these guys. Like there's there's a, a respect that you you learn for your own self, where it's like, okay, I lost. I'm not gonna sit here and just like struggle 
while this person has me, right? And, and that's that's going to be super effective in a, in a street scenario where you, you'll be able to control someone without hurting and maintain your like mental discipline and your your state of mind to a, par, a point where you've been in these scenarios before in your gym and you know how to get to a certain point where that person is just going to give up trying to hurt you, you know? All right, Amish. So what can people do if they want to participate in the Bitcoin Fight Club? So we're definitely going to schedule uh, an event for next year in Vegas. The best thing to do would be just to reach out to at Bit Fight Club on Twitter. Shoot me a DM. That's how we've been kind of coordinating for now. There's no like official sign up sheet or anything like that. But really, I mean, if, if you want to participate, if you want to fight, we could really use your help also in organizing the event. So there's a lot that goes into the logistics of booking a venue, you know, making sure that we have the insurance, making sure we have the main thing would be helping us to like advertise it and just get the word out too. Like if you can have someone already that you know will agree to fight you, a lot of people reached out and were like, hey, can you give me a matchup? Can you give me a matchup? And it's like, if you can do that legwork and get your own matchup, you know, two people that are, agree to come do it, because we don't necessarily know your height, your weight, and your level of fighting ability. And we don't want to have a matchup where it's like you're a, a jujitsu black belt who trains Muay Thai and boxing three nights a week, and we match you up with someone who's never fought before, right? So if you have a buddy who you train with already or who you talk to about this stuff and you guys want to meet up and do this, you know, we'll, we'll facilitate the, the venue and that sort of stuff. But if you can help us get the word out and, and you have a training partner that you respect or – you know, even someone who you just have Twitter beef with and you want to fight them, that's fine, too. Um, but, yeah, just just reach out to me in the DMs and we'll get you on the schedule and we'll all go out and get beers and stuff afterwards. All right. Well, that was great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And, guys, don't forget to sign up for Bitcoin Fight Club and you will have the training montage of your life leading up to the event <laughs> thank you guys 100 yeah, yeah like l listen there's there's absolutely nothing that has inspired me to train harder than that initial fight with ephesians at bit block boom a few years ago like once we both agreed to the fight it was like a switch went off in my head of like okay well there's going to come a time you're going to be in that ring and your friends are going to be watching. So you better go hit, you know, hit the training as hard as possible now. Um, and I think that's, that's something that men need. <laughs> uh, it, it really is something lacking in our culture. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for, for having me on. Uh, I hope that you can make it to America sometime or that I can come out to meet you been a real pleasure uh talking no problem and you know thanks for having me we'll see let's keep in touch yes sir